this coming from Jason McIntyre. Now, Jason McIntyre is with Fox Sports, so I haven't seen this reported elsewhere. So this is pretty new, but I expect it to spread like kudzu, as my grandfather used to say. He says on a tweet, sounds like we're going to hear in the coming days, weeks about the uh, Georgia Bulldogs football program and recruiting violations. NCAA is doing more than poking around nervous football office right now in Athens. My quote guess is slap on the wrist. So I'm, what I, I know that there are a lot of Georgia fans out there. They're going to say, oh, these guys are a couple of homers for Tennessee. But if you follow the program, you're not. There, There is an issue that is um, beginning to cultivate itself in Athens. And it is, it is a mindset that I believe stems from the head coach and his ultimate desire and need to better his mentor, Nick Saban. And I believe that discipline – has been an issue. I think that's very evident in the drag racing things that they've had going on. And it cost a couple of people their lives, which is absolutely just terrible. And it's not the first time that's been an issue. So I think there is a tendency to look the other way by the administration at Georgia. I also think there is a growing problem in terms of the way that program is run. And that is, all business, all business, all business. Now, we talk about the NIL and how it can help Tennessee and other programs bring people in, Caleb, but it also gives players the opportunity to say, you know, this ain't right. I'm not having a good time. I'm out. And some good players are doing that. These aren't just terrible players that can't find a spot on the roster. Some good players are leaving, and that's going to continue to happen. And I believe that Georgia is the old school Alabama system from early in Nick Saban's career. They're incredibly hard on players. And I believe from somebody that has knowledge of both programs that you look at a Tennessee and loving isn't the right word I'm looking for, but there, there is more of a family atmosphere, which I believe you're going to have to have some of that moving forward or your players are going to transfer. So what the H is, what's going on in, in Georgia? Despite winning two national titles, I think there are some significant cracks in the armor as far as from a culture standpoint, big time culture standpoint, and a driven to succeed at all cost standpoint, which could be why the NCAA is sniffing around. Your thoughts on Georgia? Am I bringing up valid concerns or am I reaching a little bit too early? I respect your opinion. You can be honest, but this person that told me this has knowledge of both programs and said it's run completely different. Uh, Georgia is than a lot of other other programs currently, one being Tennessee. So your thoughts, Caleb? I agree. I think we need to add a little bit of context to this, though. Um sure. You're right. It could be about Kirby Smart one up being Nick Saban. I think it's about the administration, and I'm going to tell you why. Georgia, and you know, a lot of Tennessee fans ever wanted to admit this, but it was true. For the most part, outside of like a ring selling scandal or something like that, under Mark Rick was the ultimate model of integrity for college football. Yes. I mean, they were what you wanted a program to represent college football to be about. Yes. They sacrificed winning. Sold their souls would be another term. Yes, that is true. Well, they sacrificed winning to a certain degree because of it. And they tried to make that case, by the way. I remember one week, it was one year they were playing Alabama. This was when Mark Rick was there. It must have been 2014, 20, might have been Mark Rick's last year, 2015. The week leading up to it, the somebody in the administration basically said, you know, we're just at a disadvantage from Alabama because we try to do things the right way, yada, yada, yada. And Alabama blew them out of the water. And by the way, I somewhat agreed with that because Nick Saban, I'm not saying Nick Saban cheats. I'm not saying he's a dirty coach or anything like that. I've always felt Nick Saban. Here's been my feeling on Nick Saban, Dave. I feel like Nick Saban will push the boundaries just as far as he can push them without getting into serious trouble. He looks at how can I manipulate and push the boundaries that probably is not very um, – that there's not a lot of integrity to what I'm doing, but it's technically not breaking any rules, if that makes sense. Or it's not breaking any serious rules. And – under Mark Rick, Georgia did the opposite. I do think they may have sold their soul a little bit, but in their defense, they were probably like, we're not winning any national championships. 
other schools are, they're rubbing it in our face that we're not winning national championships when we're trying to uphold these standards. You know what? Forget it. Middle finger to everybody. We're not going to care anymore. Right. And, some, and, and I think it would be the same as if Notre Dame finally says one day overnight, we're done give, putting these academic standards on our players. We're over it. We're tired of losing. And they were wrong to have these academic standards in the first place for their players. And so I think that's where Georgia got with, with Kirby Smart. So to add, in Georgia's defense, I guess is what I'm saying, I think they've gone completely the other way. And they have no idea how to walk that fine line that Nick Saban knows how to walk, which is, again, push the boundaries, you know, certain dis- – as they said about Slytherins in Harry Potter, the good Slytherin has a certain disregard for the rules. I have but no I, idea what that means. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want to hear your thoughts. Am I being soft on, on the message board and, and via Twitter? Am I just being soft saying that you win two national championships, but your program is running afoul now possibly of the NCAA legal authorities, morality when you're drag racing out in the street. And if I'm being soft, tell me, would you, would you rather have the two championships and people literally getting killed in the street? I think there has to be a better medium than that. And for those that think that, well, what does it matter? You've got Kirby smart and he's going to continue to win for the next 20 years. So who cares that this will be a bump in the road. They'll get through it. He'll fix that. Don't don't be so sure because Nebraska was incredibly dominant in the 90s. And then you had Lawrence Phillips. You had some other players go awry. You've had Miami issues where they were incredibly dominant and NCAA issues threw them off of uh, decades long domination. So don't be so sure, Georgia fan that's out there that's looking at me saying, uh, hey, his, his logo's orange. You must just be a Tennessee fan and a homer. Georgia fan, ask yourself if this at some point ends and how it ends. Because if you think it ends with Kirby Smart doing what Nick Saban is going to do and just riding off into the sunset and everything's fine, I got some bad news for you. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're either going to have a guy who who does get in trouble, who gets burned out. I think Nick Saban's a one in a million. I don't think you're going to have a Kirby Smart coach for 20 years and just right off into the sunset. I don't think he'll go to the NFL because of his ties to Georgia, but I, 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 I think there's a great chance that this ends in a negative way for Georgia. Now they may win two more championships before that time, Caleb, but I just think there are some cracks in the foundation there that they should be concerned about. And Georgia fans should be concerned about. Yeah. And I think the best example, ask Florida about this when they rubbed everybody's Mm -hmm. nose in with urban Meyer. I mean, they hid behind, don't you remember? We've got a great Christian quarterback. Yeah, but you also got a guy calling black security guards the N-word at country concerts. You got a guy killing people. You got a guy telling his girlfriend it's time twice. to die. Killed people Sorry? twice. Killed people twice. <laughs> Killed people twice. <laughs> uh, you got a player trying to literally gouge a player's eyes out on the football field. And everyone's like, yeah, I'll suspend him for a half because I'm Urban Meyer and I can do that. And then and, th- and then you had Urban Meyer go to Ohio State and say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take this guy who was beating his wife and I'm going to put him on my staff. And I don't care because I'm Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is a disgraced name in college football now. Nobody respects him across the sport. Doesn't mean he may not get hired again because he's, he's a bad dude, but he is a great coach. But Urban Meyer has never left, has, did not leave Florida amicably, nor did he leave Ohio State amicably. So it did not end well. The Nebraska thing I'm going to push back. I think Nebraska, I think the triple option was on its way out and 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 Tom Osborne just found a couple of the right guys to run it in the 90s. Um, but I don't think, I, I think by the 90s, you know, by the time the 80s came and Miami brought in that 4-3 defense with Jimmy Johnson, Tennessee did the same thing with Larry Lacewell. I think when you started to get athletes to uh, the, the type of athletes you got, I don't think the triple option was long for this world as far as a national championship program was. was. I think Nebraska just kind of hit it at the right time in the mid nineties, if that makes sense. And then they ran against the coach in 97 who did not know how to defend anything, but a standard pro style offense. <laughs> well, and, and they got a Tommy Franklin, who was a perfect fit. Uh, Tommy Frazier, Tommy Frazier, Tommy Frazier. Yeah. Excuse me. I mean, he was just the perfect fit. 
you you could have run that at the same time, and had he not gone to Nebraska, it would have been way different. But that guy was an absolute hoss. I mean, I, but yeah, I do think they let. I, I think big picture they they let discipline slip, which I wonder if that's happening already at Georgia, Tennessee was guilty of that after they won a championship game uh they won the national championship i think it started to slip at that very moment i think it slipped from 99 2000 2001 and i will still argue you saw it on the field in that 2001 sec championship game there was a julian battle dropped interception there was a dante stallworth fumble uh a travis stevens fumble i think when you run an undisciplined program as far as how you work with the community, it ends up showing up on the field at some point. Now, you may be so dominant that you overcome that, but I think it ends up showing up on the field. Yeah. I mean, the story that stands out to me, I will. Ne- I forget who wrote the book. Someone wrote a book about the 2005 team. It was called Orange Crush was the name of the book. Um, and they talked about how there was a noticeable oh. difference. Uh, I forgot that book. It's by Darren Epps, who worked with the Chattanooga Times Free Press. Okay, that's who it was by? Okay. Well, it was supposed to be a book about how everything was fantastic in 2005. <laughs> and then it collapsed. And, and then it totally collapsed. I was like, Darren, you still writing that book? And he goes, yeah, I guess. Well, it was he's a good in, one. I think he's in logistics now. Well, one of the things I remember was there was a chapter in the book that talked about players from the 90s, like the mid-90s uh, that played up to the national championship team who would come back for practice in the 2000s talked about a notice noticeable difference in former's demeanor in that he was much less intense with the players by the 2000s just seemed to be a little more like you talk about CEO. I mean, and here's a guy who let Albert Hainsworth chase somebody alpha practice with a 10 foot pole and let him come back into practice after that. Yes. With the, well, he came back with the 10 foot pole. <laughs> okay, that's right. So he was escorted from practice and then tried to commit a felony right there on the practice field. And I'll never forget Chris Lowe now of ESPN uh, with the Tennessean at the time, because the rule was you could report on practice as long as you ask about it. You and I have talked about it. So if you said, uh, for instance, uh, uh, it, it looked like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Jason Witten was lined up wide. Uh, do you think you can utilize him as a receiver? The, the rule was, Philip would say, well, no, you don't want to. I don't want that out there. So there were only five trusted reporters and you knew where it would come from. You can't do that now. There's like 50 dudes that show up over there, half of which I don't know how they got a credential. I guess you can buy them on StubHub. But that was the way things worked. And I remember Chris Lowe of ESPN said, but Philip, what if Albert Hainsworth had have actually hit Will Offenhusel with the bar? (laughs) (laughs) And there... The classic response, and those of you that know me know I don't curse, but Philip's classic res- response is, damn it, he didn't hit him, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. That was a sign. And did Albert play that week? Yes, he did. And do you think Nick Saban would have let Albert Hainsworth play? I don't know. Um because I don't, I haven't been to hundreds of his practices like I was with Fulmer. So I, I can't, t- I don't, I think he probably would not have played, but I can't remember who they were playing that week. I remember it was cold, so it was probably nobody great. Uh, but I would have to go back and look. But I think Kirby Smart would play him. I yeah. think Kirby Smart would play him. And we know Josh Heupel wouldn't because Josh Heupel suspended Jimmy Banks. Yeah, so in the end, it sounds like I'm being all altruistic. I'm really not. I think it's the best way to run a football program. I, re- I really believe that. I'm not trying to say that Kirby Smart's a bad dude, so he's doing bad things. I think that you, if you're a Georgia fan and you're listening to this, instead of just saying, hey, this guy's got an orange logo, he's a Tennessee homer, you need to be saying to yourself, it's Kirby Smart getting a little loose as far as discipline. And if he is, then you've – got to be really really careful moving forward because it is tough to get that back you can go from discipline to being a little bit looser but looser going to discipline is pretty much impossible and philip fulmer found that out no year more evident than 2005 travis says saban let a player hit a girl this year and he played 
That yeah. that was a Tennessee fan though. If a player hits a teammate, it's different. Saban cares nothing for girls that cheer for other teams. 